Yo guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So more than recently, for a lot of my YouTube comments, I've been getting a lot of questions if I'm getting stuttering on our system. A lot of users who are using uh, Ryzen X3D uh, chips have been mentioning they've been getting stuttering issues. So I figured I would just show my BIOS settings. Now my BIOS isn't really super configured for like max overclocks or anything, but I'm just gonna show you a quick, few quick settings that I do personally use whenever I set up my BIOS. So I am running an MSI motherboard. You go into the overclock settings. And one of the most important things, which I was told when I first got a Ryzen chip is always set your UCL key uh, DV1 mode to UCL K slash memory clock. What this does is it's gonna put your memory and CPU at a one to one ratio. Normally, I think it's set to uh, auto, I believe. Do make sure you set that setting. That's very important to improve your memory bandwidth. And depending on how fast your memory is, you may have to lower your memory clock speed to 60 or 6,000 megahertz transfers. I'm running PC 64 at RAM, but I've always had it stable running that setting. So that's one thing that I've always done. Uh, of course, i am always running the Expo setting from memory, so it's nothing really too unusual. And then for the advanced CP configuration, I am running a negative PBO offset. So you're gonna go to AMD overclocking, precision boost overdrive. And then you're going to go to Curve Optimizer, and then you're going to set it to all cores, a negative offset, and you can do 20, you can do 15, 10, depending on what's stable. I haven't tested beyond negative 20, but that's just what's been stable for me, so I haven't really messed with that. There's also a Curve Shaper and Optimizer, but I'm not really familiar, honestly, with those advanced uh, options there. Uh, let's see, what else is there that's probably worth mentioning? There is one also setting about power, and I always put it at 170 watts. Now I'm running the 9950X3D, so it doesn't require more wattage, but that's just something I've always done is set it to 170 watts. Nothing too crazy there. And then there's another setting that's worth mentioning. Uh, if you're running a dual CCD chip, like an X3D, like a 9950X3D, or um, 7950 70, is you're going to go to AMD CBS and then under AMD CBS SMU common options there's this setting here CPPC dynamic preferred cores now this is going to choose your 3D vcast cores to primarily use when gaming so that's another little tip that I've always done so you do want to set that and then that way Let's say you're streaming or you run a run other task on your non dual or your non 3D VCAST cores, it'll use those cores secondarily, but it'll use the gaming cores primarily, the 3D VCAST cores. So that's another thing that I've always personally done. And uh, for those of you who are not running the, obviously you're not running the onboard um, integrated graphics. You're going to want to go to Integrated Peripherals. Actually, sorry, that's the wrong one. You're going to go to Integrated Graphics Options and then just stable, disable your Integrated Graphics. I've always done this. It's not really necessary, but sometimes it is handy because sometimes in Windows, it'll try to use your onboard uh, graphics and it'll try to use your... Um, I don't know, just for what I would always say, if you're running a dedicated graphics card, just disable it, just to ensure that you're not really going to run into any issues. It's just my own personal thing. And then other than that, everything else is pretty much just standard, oops, standard uh, settings. So not really overclocked, just running a negative PV offset. And then again, just make sure you run this setting here and you could run either 6,000 megahertz transfer for 6400 depending on what's stable and then other than that i'm not really too into all these other settings so of course if you are like a master overclocker and you really know the advanced options you can mess with those things that's something i've never done and then i've also heard a few people mention you should run the gaming mode but i've seen videos from like jay's two cents and a few other users that sometimes using that it's going to run your chip out of a spec and it end up it ends up just causing more problems than uh, it really should. So just, I personally, I would just not use it. But for some people, they claim to have 50% boost using it. But me, I'm just going to follow what bigger YouTubers are saying. They're saying just to not use it. It just ends up creating more problems. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, just a quick little video. 
like I said, I've been getting a lot of comments for a lot of people. Either they just built their setup, whether it's a 9800X3D or 9850X3D, and they've been running with soldering options. So I figured I'd show my BIOS settings. Just pretty uh, quick, simple, nothing too detailed, and hopefully that's helpful for uh, you. If it is, do give this video a like. And if you want to see more content like this, more RTX 5090 game benchmarks, along with my Ryzen 9 9950X3D CPU, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support. And I hope this video was helpful for some of you. And uh, again, thanks for watching and peace out.